to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Now, in our last episode, we... Well, we beat Man United. There is no two ways of, about that. We beat Man United, and that is about as good a result as you're going to see all season from us. I think we could pretty much go the rest of the season and not get a better result than that. Um, however, things have still been going fairly bloody well for us in the league, although we do have some bad news, um, quite a lot of bad news, unfortunately, and that is going to be coming up soon. But first, we're going to just basically... Um, walk you through what's happened this month basically um you will be seeing face camp i hope later in this episode once we get into today's game against burnley i don't know exactly um how it's going to work i'm hoping it's i've got it recording right now um that way i can just fade it into the video when i need it i'm hoping it works if it do, if you don't see it then that's because something went wrong and it didn't work so i really hope it does but i'm just testing it tonight it won't be probably in tomorrow's episode i'm just seeing what you guys think of it and the idea and so on and so forth so yeah let me know what you think in the comments when that comes up um right also, I'm going to be adding some more leagues in uh, at the end of today's episode because I've been looking at your comments and seeing which leagues you want to see, uh, who wants to see me add into the game. So we'll be doing that at the end of the episode. Right, we've got some big stuff to talk about. So, uh, what was it? Man United, right, yeah. Next game up was Everton at home. And Everton are having a really poor season by their standards and, to be honest, anybody's standards. It, it's not what they would have wanted let's put it that way um and we took full advantage was just oh you couldn't have had three people scoring goals that would make me more happy frankly unless maybe milton peralta had chipped in with one because frankly he's having a wonderful season so here's how the game went everton basically didn't really do anything for most of the first half and this was just some wonderful work here burrell taking a little run at the defense drops it back from usonda Rosanna comes inside, goes to Kieran Griffiths, watch this for a strike. His first goal of the season, and what a hit that is from Kieran Griffiths. Pompey won Everton nil. It's his first goal of the season. So it's taken him a little while to get there, but he's back fully fit and firing on all cylinders. And he's just such a creative player, and it's so wonderful to see him back. Almost immediately direct, almost immediately from that, every time Everton got the ball, they just lumped out of the pitch. Peralta here with a wonderful little layoff to Musonda, into Griffiths. Those three were superb in this game. Watch Peralta here. Drops it into Burrell, turns, wank, 2-0. And Pompey 2, Everton, and I just figure there's no way they're coming back from that. And frankly, in the second half, they didn't really offer much more in this game than they already had. So it was no real surprise when, with six minutes to go, having brought on Norman Millington just to give Barella rest at this point, we won the ball back in the midfield eventually. Oh, Ivancic has been absolutely brick wall material this month. For most of this month, he's been so, so good. He's just been everywhere. Peralta there, whipping the ball out to Griffiths, and, well, who else? I mean, Kieran Griffiths there loses out, but Marcelo does well. Unfortunately, we do lose the ball. It's one of these long highlights, unfortunately. And again, ball comes away, and Lopez Souza this time mopping up. Lucarelli whips it into the midfield to Peralta, drops it short, tries again, this time into Norman Millington, loses the ball, gets back up, and it's going to be cleared away again. But this time, Ivancic is there. Those The midfield and defenders have been absolutely wonderful the last few, um, last few months. It's just the whole team's clicked. Griffiths drops it in to Millington and bang what a strike that one actually skipped and I didn't see a replay of that during the game so it's nice to see that his seventh goal of the season and it's really really good to see him back on the score sheet because it's great and Ali Burrell has been absolutely on fire lately and that's why the bad news coming up soon is going to be even worse for you to hear um, so domination really in that game in our next game we traveled to Craven Cottage and I do not know in what world we got away with this one um, we made a very very good Fulham side, like they're eighth in the league at the moment. We made them look completely average here on their own ground. This was away from home. Wallace here with the ball back to Peralta. Great strike from him. And Porno Stash makes it 1 0 to Pompey with his third goal of the season. From centre mid, he's really contributing a lot of goals, um, comparatively speaking, and assists. And he's just getting great ratings every game. Wallace now with the ball in, back out to Musonda. It was a lot of set piece work from this one. Rios brings it back down to Musonda. Musonda eventually will get the ball back across the box and it's going to come back out again. But who should be there but Rios, who's had a good month, actually. Finally got his first goal for us, which you'll see later on. Uh, Musonda this time whips it in again, drops it short for Rios, whips it to the back post. Wallace can't win the ball and Fulham will bring it away through Fado, who went, later went off injured. But again, Ivancic is just everywhere. Um, keeping him fit this season, I think, could be the reason that we get European football. I genuinely do. He's been so good. He's finally sort of realising that potential. Burrell here... Um, Dropping it short to Rios, making the run himself. Back to Peralta, who's been superb as well. Musonda this time. Long range effort, comes down short, and Ali Burrell makes it 2 0 to us. At this point, the game was fairly even, so it's not as though we were bossing them or anything at this point. In the second half, I changed to make things a bit more. Oh, sorry, no, it was still more in the first half. I actually settled down and went to a more defensive style after we'd scored that goal. 
didn't make any difference. By the way, Augustin Martinez has had an absolutely brilliant season so far. He's made some saves, especially early on in this game against Fulham. You see they had four clear-cut chances. They had, he made a triple save at one point, which was three clear-cut chances in one. And they were all world-class saves. Watch this from Burrell. Loses the ball eventually but the fact he's willing to run at people again and look Ivancic is right there constantly recycling that possession we it's great to watch Burrell went through took it around the keeper essentially and it was 3-0 to Pompey before half time and that was his 12th league goal of the season I think it's his 12th league I think all his goals are coming in the league really was just motoring and Milton Peralta as you can see was man of the match in this one just because he was so so good in our next game we carried on this amazing now this is the game when everything went wrong unfortunately literally everything that could went could go wrong did go wrong i'm just going to explain this now so we won the game 2-1 you'll see the highlights in a set but basically musonda we lost burrell we lost peralta we lost griffiths we lost all in one game i mean what is this shit uh, it was just ridiculous all of them in one game that was our entire midfield basically gone in one game um and uh, the fact is, we managed to come up with a win anyway. What more with the volley this time? Um, but we'd made all our substitutions by 33 minutes into this game, which meant Kieran Griffiths actually ended up playing most of the game injured because he got injured in the first half as well, but we couldn't bring him off because we just had nobody on the pitch. Um, Huddersfield eventually did equalise here when the ball is slipped into the channel here by Goncalves and Jackman just puts it away. First goal, we conceded for quite some time and Huddersfield are not doing that great, so I was disappointed to see the equaliser. But with the amount of players we'd had injured and the players we'd had to bring on all out of position, I wasn't all that surprised. Somehow, though, and I still don't know quite how we did this, we did actually manage to win this game. Wonderful ball in from Marcelo. Rios with a shot, rebound, and Kieran Griffiths, despite being injured, still on the pitch, managed to make it 2-1 Pompey with his second goal of the season. We actually did win the game. Um... It's just since then when things have really sort of been wrong. So Ali Burrell has torn his hamstring and he's going to be out for three months, which is an absolute joke. Um, Charlie Musonda, I think he sprained his ankle, uh, if I remember correctly. Twisted knee, maybe? I can't remember which one of the two it was. Oh, pulled hamstring, sorry. Um, it was three weeks that he was supposed to be out for. So he's going to be back in a little while. Um, God, who else? Uh, Milton Peralta, he actually is fit again yet, but I don't know if he's ready for the game. Why is he not showing any kind of conditions here? Again, the, the stats because he's injured and tired as well. Um, so that wasn't great. And of course, Griffiths actually did make it back for the Spurs game, but then he got injured in the Spurs game and is now going to be out for five to six weeks again. <sighs> oh dear, I just... We had such a good run, and we actually did end up winning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 Premier League wins on the bounce we managed to win. And 11 in 12 matches, if you discount the QPR game. It was ridiculous. In our next game, we travelled with a slightly weakened team, i got to tell you. Um, and we still did well, and this was a bit of a joke as well. But you can tell what happens when you've got a slightly weakened side out. Um, and I say slightly because we had a very weak inside compared. Sam Mantum had to play in attacking midfield today. And he actually didn't do a bad job, to be fair to him. So I figured going to Burnley, who are not doing great, but they're also not doing too badly, was going to be a tough one. But if you look at the stats, they did have quite a few clear-cut chances. That's what I would say. Every shot on target of theirs was a good chance. But we really should have done better. Like, that should not be creeping in the bottom corner. Kondov, um, well, no, there wasn't all. every shot on target was a clear-cut chance. Kondov should not be allowed to score from there. Thankfully, we did actually come back... Um, Marcelo with the ball in and Kenneth McAvoy with an absolutely wonderful header playing out on that left-hand side just because we've got no one else that can play there at the moment. It's such a shame, but that's the way things are. Made it one all on 20 minutes. It sort of all started going just as the, start, as the half came to a close. We actually started to play some quite nice football at this point. I was thinking to myself, surely, maybe it's just the systems are all starting to click and the whole team knows what they're doing and maybe it isn't about the individual players. Um, you know, it definitely is. Like, the players we're missing are huge for us and I really do think that's going to hinder us for a while because you look at how well we were playing everything just seemed to click into place and it was perfect Griffiths particularly but Burrell and Musonda are also look at this we very nearly conceded there but Martinez whips it into midfield and Wallace does a great job Peralta is huge and thank god he's not too bad it's just a lovely ball through from Sam Mantum here though and Norman Millington smashes it in the bottom corner thank god we still have him at the club that was his eighth goal of the season so although Burrell is out injured and will be for quite some time thankfully Norman Millington can step in and he is just as good I really do think he can be just as good um that made it 2-1 then on 65 minutes um 
we had a bit of a, a melee here, essentially. Wallace comes inside, Peralta's strike is well saved, and eventually it's tackled over the line by Jamal Lascelles. Um, I think it's Jamal Lascelles. I don't know, actually. I think it is Jamal Lascelles. So 3-1 Pompey at this point, and it's all game... It's basically game, set, and match. Um, we're completely comfortable. Nothing's going on. All of a sudden, it's long ball territory, and they must have just pinpointed this as a weakness, and I didn't notice it quick enough. Um, but basically... Gudetti here swishes it across and Hernandez comes inside Marcelo great finish from him I thought 10 minutes to go surely our defense is good enough because frankly it wasn't defenders that were getting injured I didn't change any of them it was attackers that were getting injured so I figured it shouldn't really affect us defensively but you still need strength ahead of that and then literally directly from the kickoff uh basically I didn't have enough time to actually make the change just a looping ball over the top Gudetti here and then it just oh comedy of errors there and this is more like the Pompey of last season losing a two goal lead away at a side like Burnley when we're doing so well in the league so it was really disappointing and I can only think it's just because we've got so many good players out the defenders just don't have the support in front of them to actually you know do something like that so that's that's a real shame in our next game we traveled away to Spurs and I made a huge error in this one in the sense that I thought we were at home to Spurs, so I tried to match their 4-4-2 by putting two centre mids in, which I then had to very quickly ch when they started battering us in the early stages. So I switched to our two defensive mid system, and, well, we got almost instant results, I have to say, it was amazing. Millington with the flick on header after Griffiths had headed it through, made it 1-0 to Pompey there with his ninth goal of the season. So you see, he scored in each of the games that he started um, so far since Burrell's been out, so he certainly got what it takes. And, yeah, we were completely dominating all of a sudden with this system. It was working wonderfully for us, doing the same old stuff where we just pick the ball up in the midfield and just recycle that possession around through Ivancic and Borges, who, of course, with the partner this time. So this time, Millington with the provider. Rios takes it around the goalkeeper, and it's 2-0 to Pompey here at White Hot Lane. All systems are go. And that was his first ever goal for us, too, which was great to see. The problem being, though, in the second half, Spurs went 4-3-3, and I didn't notice it until after... Well, basically, they'd scored two goals. Uh... Look at this. I mean, what on earth are we doing letting him get into that kind of space? That terrible defending. And Divock Origi makes it 2-1. And then literally directly after that, before we'd had a chance to do anything, Origi went through someone there directly. Dongu there. And, of course, Enes Unal makes it 2-2. Now, I did, after that, change the system. And we managed to sort of nullify them for the rest of the game and had our chances to potentially win it in the end. And, but, frankly, Spurs should have won this game. And we've actually done well to get a point from it. So I actually look at that as a good result. And, frankly... Last season, this would have been considered an amazing result when you look at how bad we've been here. We've lost some big games at Spurs, so actually, I'm looking at this as a positive one. But what all this does to the league is this. Pompey are top of the Premier League. Admittedly, Man United have a game in hand on us, and those last two games against Spurs and Burnley, imagine if we'd got the three points from those and not thrown away two goal leads in both games. Um, yeah, we, we'd be on 50 points up the halfway stage of the season. We've only lost once in our first 19 Premier League fixtures, so no matter how poor those last two slip-ups have been for me there's just oh, what a start what a season we're having um we're currently seven points clear of stoke in fourth and 10 points clear of spurs in fifth uh, of course but you will see that chelsea there do have three games in hand so they could potentially go under 42 points and up into third place if they win all three of them so it means that we're essentially seven points clear of fourth place still doing okay but stoke are really having a good season and remember we won 4-2 at the Britannia Stadium to just give you an idea of how well we've played this year at times. So, yeah, that's basically the way things are. Let's just take a little look at the squad. Goals? Ali Burrell has 12 in 12 starts, which is great. But Burrell, you know, 9 in 10 starts is pretty decent too. Assist-wise, Charlie Musonda and Wallace have 10 apiece. Man of the match, Wallace Griffiths lead, uh, tie that with 3 apiece. Pass rating, Lucarelli, Borges and Ivancic nicely up there, of course. Yellow cards, Ivancic with 7. That's not really that surprising. Red cards, of course, just that one for Lopez Souza. And average rating is Charlie Musonda, but lots of people above 7. Very few... Only Augustin Martinez, despite how good he's played for us at times, have actually got a below 7 rating that are starting sort of players. Uh, Borges, eh, Wally and Francois. Francois is not that great, actually. He's he's still young, so he's still learning. So let's get to get into the game. The, today's game against Burnley. We are at home this time, so they have, they have changed their system. Um, I'm going to play uh, this particular one. I like to go, use this as a sort of feeler, and then we change things as we go. If you feel that we're in dominate the game we'll switch to the two in mid uh, two centimeters if we feel that we're all getting battered which seems unlikely against Burnley we'll drop one of them back so this is like my sort of feeler system and sometimes this works fine so Mantum apparently is the I mean it's really what other option have we got Musonda's injured Griffiths is injured I don't want to play Millington there because we don't have another striker 
to bring in apart from Lucarelli, and I think I'd rather use him as a winger. So it's going to be Gray and Lopez who's at the back, Taylor and Marcelo, Ivancic sitting in front. Peralta at least, at least we've got Peralta and Ivancic in there. They, they should be good for creativity. Millington's a great finisher. Wallace is still good. McAvoy, he can still do it. It's just the risk of him getting injured is quite great at the moment. Um, but that's why we do have Yassir Amrani. He's not quite as good as uh, McAvoy yet, but he will be very, very soon uh, by the end of the season, I feel, if he, especially if he gets some more games. So I may have to start rotating those two. Um, Plus, we played a game only two days ago, which is why our uh, fitness levels are a little bit shit. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, I suppose it's the Christmas period. So let's get a, let's get into things, basically, um, and off the 3D match engine, because I always forget to do that, and I'm going to make sure I don't forget that this time. Right, so when I click start, um, not start, but like, you know, start game or whatever, you should see probably in the top left-hand corner of the screen not covering anything but just like in the top corner of the match screen like just sitting by the where i would normally put a league table is where you'll see my face in a second so i'll see you guys in the game right Whew. nice to finally see you um let's just get this game on the roll let's just get this going and um, the only time my face will disappear probably is if i go on tactics menus or something because i don't want it covering up stuff so let's hope we can come up with something special today we don't need to come up with something special, actually. We just need to come up with a simple little win. Millington. Oh, Peralta. 1-0 Pompey already. He's offside, isn't he? No, he's not. Porno stash makes it 1-0 to Portsmouth. That is just glorious stuff. Um, I don't know what my face looks like because I can't actually see the webcam recording on another screen. So I could be doing all kinds of stupid shit with my face right now. But yeah, lovely little slide ball through from Millington. Looked a bit borderline offside, but it wasn't apparently. And we 1-0 up already. First shot of the game, 1-0 Pompey. Um, struggling to control possession. Well, it's 50-50 at the moment, so I'm not really sure what you're on about. Man United are winning through Sanabria. Massive shocker there. It's been a pretty poor first half, but the point is we are winning the game still, currently. And you can't really ask for more than that. Burnley seem to be quite a compact team, and we struggle to get enough shots against them, really, when we play them at Turf Moor. Uh, they're quite clinical as well. When they get put in front of goal, they were very capable of finishing, as we found out. But we should be good for the moment. I've got to keep an eye on Marcelo. Who's really knackered at the moment? Ivancic. I'm thinking maybe... Bring it on Borges or Asenhus. Maybe... I just really don't want to substitute Ivancic, but at the same time, the lower his condition is, the more likely he's going to get injured. And he... We cannot afford to get injured. If we can get a second goal by 65 minutes, then I will substitute Ivancic uh, because we do need to get him off because he is going to get injured, I just feel. We need to close down Seferovic. Wallace with the ball in. Millington at the far post, not quite there. And oh, we've won the ball back though. Ivancic has poor. Millington, surely he's not going to shoot from there. Oh, that's... What are you doing, Millington? Sorry, Norman, but that's a really wasteful piece of play. And a wild map mopped up there by uh, Robert Gray in the end. Ivancic, don't lose the ball, Tony. Mantum now. He needs to step up for us. And he has done a decent job. Mantum. Oh, there's a little bit of space if he can slot it through. No. Comes back to Ivancic. Mantum. Is there a ball in this time for Wallace? No, it's Millington. Can he turn? Can he finish? No, he can't. He hits the post. Millington on the follow-up. It's 2-0 to Portsmouth. And Las Bangura is injured for Burnley. Well, he can't be offside because it was his goal. Uh, his shot initially. And that's two for Norman Millington today. No, it's not. What we're talking about. A goal and an assist for Millington. He doesn't half love linking that play up. Oh, what a strike. It looked like a topo, but look at the desire. I uh, don't know why he's holding his hands above his head there. It almost looked like he was doing devil horns. Right, so two goals for the good. Um, uh, no, sorry, I'm doing it. I'm Who's fitter? Actually, I'm going to bring on Asenhus instead of Borgia because he is on a yellow card as well. I'm probably going to bring off uh, Jed Wallace for Lucarelli in a bit because... Oh, we've got a free kick though. Wallace completed... Oh, it's in the back of the net. It's 3-0 to Portsmouth. And I'll tell you what, this has been a surprisingly good performance considering how bad we've been in the last couple of games. We surely can't throw away a three goal lead. A little bit lucky there with the deflection off the wall, but it is Wallace's goal. And that is 3-0 to Portsmouth. Um, right, let's make another change. Let's, whoa, yeah. Um, I'm bringing on Amrani here, actually, because McAvoy is very much about to get injured. And I'd like to nip it in the bud before he does so. If that's all the same, I'm going to stick with this tactic because we are winning this game so comfortably. Uh, looks like we chose right. And it looks like it is going to be one defeat in 20 league games because I can't see us losing now. Um, apologies if you can hear uh, noise in the background. That is a helicopter <laughs> flying over my house. Um, let's see. Lucarelli, probably best to get. Don't want to bring off the defenders. Uh, Lucarelli, yeah, we'll bring him on for Wallace. I can't really bring him on for Mantum because we've got literally no one that can play a centre of attacking mid at the moment um, at all at the club because they're all bloody injured. Four minutes to go. We've made all our subs, but... We're pretty cushy. Another goal. That would be quite something. Amrani here. He's done it well here. Millington for the hat-trick. Oh, he scored it. Not, not the hat-trick. 
Nah, fuck's sake. But that is Millington again, and Burrell gets an injury, Millington has stepped in, and now has four and three, so oh, we've got quite a strike force. But I don't like playing them both at the same time, um, and we don't really need to at the moment. Goalkeeper probably could have done a bit better here. Don't know what the defenders are doing, but Millington... Oh, dear, that's terrible goalkeeper. It is four nil to Pompey. Probably our biggest win of the season, actually. Um, wow. It's come at a time when I wouldn't have expected us to be able to get a 4-0 home win. But we've done it, and we've kept a clean sheet, which is even more important. I think we've just proven that even without some of those players, these tactics can work for us, and they are working for us, and that should be about it. It's going to keep us top of the Premier League, at least for the, you know, at least for the next week. I can't believe we're top of the Premier League. The thing is, the main worry for me is Stoke City. They look unbelievable. Have they won as well? Yes, they have. Stoke City are actually up into third place in the league. They've been winning, 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 winning. They are genuinely having a real go at it. Like, if we weren't doing as well as we are, they would be the standout team this season. Um, and that's going to be my main worry about us getting in the top four, is just how well Stoke City are playing. Who's managing Stoke? I'm just kind of curious about that at the moment. Who is managing Stoke? Chris Hewton. So there you go. Big hoops. Uh, Newcastle and Sheffield United look absolutely awful at the moment, and they couldn't even muster a, a proper win each <laughs> between them. Uh, they've got two wins apiece at the moment. I mean, that just shows you how unlucky... I mean, not, not how unlucky, but look at Liverpool. They're 17th. They, I know they've sacked their manager again, uh, and they've hired Zinedine Zidane to be their new manager, so that's going to be a fun one. They're playing City today, so they could end up getting even... City have been stomp, just stomping on people, frankly. Uh, let's just take a look at the overview here. So, yeah, Pompey top of the league amazingly all i want this year is champions league but imagine if we won the premier league and the way we're playing would you really be that surprised if we actually did as much as like man united have been amazing but look at the points tally that we're actually on for if we were to um continue at this rate which i'm not saying we will do because that would require some absurd wins but if we carried on at this same kind of level I'm trying to work out how much it'd be. We'd 92 points? That's sort of league-winning tallies. But, you know, and only 22 goals conceded in 20 matches. That's a lot better for me. And we're still scoring plenty. Um, not quite on the top scorers list at the moment. Danny Welbeck's getting a lot for Leicester. But Musondo and Jed Wallace both up there on assists. Most clean sheets. Augustin Martinez has nine as well, which is great. So, what we're going to do now is quickly um, go in and add some leagues. So, what I'm going to do... Oh, pardon me is go and add some basically so people want to see belgium that's not a problem i wanted to put belgium and i'm putting different leagues into what i put into my um red star save earlier today so we are putting denmark in definitely we are going to put i'm going to put finland's top league in as well just because we might be able to i don't know i'm just curious to see if we can find any decent regions uh, of course we need germany and france stands to reason they make some great players, so I want to make sure we can get them in the league. I'm only putting the top two leagues in those countries. Um, Holland, obviously. Some of the regens that come out of Holland are absurd, and I really do want to sign some of them. Um, someone said Iceland. I just don't think their regens would be quite good enough at this stage. So probably not Italy, of course. We want uh, Serie B. And I'm going to go to other continents. Don't worry, I'm just going through here first. Norway, I do want to put Norway into. Um, Poland, perhaps not Poland for this save. Portugal, yes. Um, I, Poland is on my Red Star save, so that's fine. Uh, Romania, perhaps not for this one. Russia, yeah, okay, we'll go Russia. Uh, Scotland, I'm going to put Scotland in. I'll need to the championship, though. Um, because I do keep getting a lot of good scout reports from Scotland, so I will bring them forward. Uh, Spain, of course, we want Spain. Liga Atalante. And, oh, not Asia. Um, Sweden, I'm thinking Sweden as well. Yeah, we'll put Sweden in. Right, um, as for other countries, I don't really want to put any African ones, and no offence, it's just not really right for this save. Uh, I guess it's kind of similar with Asia, really. However, I am going to put in um, Brazil and Argentina's top flight. Uh, that's South America. Brazil and Argentina's top flights. And I'm thinking the MLS as well. So there, there we go. That's what I've put in. That's 80,000 players in the database. That's about the same as I've got going in the other one. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to confirm that. And that will save when I save it. And they'll slowly start streaming in whenever we get the chance. So, guys, I hope you like this episode. Um, I really bloody have. Uh, although, obviously, we've had some poorer results this month. Still unbeaten since the back the start of October. So, not bad. Uh, so, let's see what we got in January. We've got ourselves some FA Cup action. And we've got some decent games coming up. Sheffield United at home. That is a must-win game. Brighton away in the Cup. Must-win. Norwich away is going to be tough. Swansea at home. And Liverpool at home. 
both must wins and we'll be doing the Liverpool game I don't think we've ever live come the Liverpool game so that's going to be fun so I'll see you guys then I hope you like the experiment with the face cam please feel free to drop in the comments what you think of doing just any tips um that'd be great so if you like what you've seen please feel free to drop a like on the episode and if you'd like to even on that please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Bell Red in your inbox every single day at 5 30 and 8 o'clock and I'll see you guys in the next episode for the Liverpool game bye bye